Hello and welcome to United Nations News by the Universal Versatile Society, casting a bright light on the latest developments from United Nations. Our headlines for today are World Water Week 2023, addressing water crisis and climate impact. Massive economic pain for Australia if temperature rises exceed 2 degrees Celsius, the intergenerational report predicts. Rusko leader outbreak in six years hits DR Congo, particularly affecting children. Integration of traditional medicine and science for global health highlighted at WHO summit. At least 500 children die of hunger in Sudan because of the war. India's latent law on women empowerment and gender parity. Wastewater holds potentials to provide alternative energy, UNEP. So let's discuss this in more detail. World Water Week 2023 addressing water crisis and climate impact. World Water Week, a significant annual event in Stockholm, Sweden, has commenced, driving experts, officials, scientists and academics to discuss innovative water management strategies highlighting looming challenges, including a water crisis. President of the General Assembly suggested solutions such as a water cooperation platform for UN member states and a UN-wide water strategy led by a special envoy on water. This event builds upon the outcomes of the UN Water Conference held in March 2023, aiming to propel commitments outlined in the Water Action Agenda as discussions emphasize the link between water and climate policies due to their interconnectedness in climate change's impacts. Massive economic pain for Australia if temperature rises exceed 2 degrees Celsius, in the generational rapper predicts. Australia's low emission success will avert severe economic decline but drastically reduce coal exports by 2063, states the government's intergenerational report. The report, releasing soon, presents detailed insights on climate impacts, highlighting 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels as a turning point. Temperature rise beyond this could lead to major impacts on sectors, and GDP loses between $135 to $423 billion, potentially rises to $155 at 3 degrees Celsius. Adaptation is vital for agriculture and tourism, with 50% of sandy coastlines at risk from rising sea levels. Australia's response to climate change shifted from global embarrassment to leadership in just over a year. Scolera outbreak in six years hits DR Congo, particularly affecting children. Due to increased fighting and displacement, the Democratic Republic of the Congo's eastern region is experiencing a serious cholera crisis that is particularly affecting children. In the first seven months of 2023, there have been 230 facilities nationwide and 31,332 suspected or confirmed cases of cholera. North Kivu is particularly afflicted with over 21,400 cases, including over 8,000 children under 5, as opposed to 5,120 cases in the year of 2022. Transmission of cholera is facilitated by overcrowded and stressful relocation camps. UNICEF is requesting $62.5 million to offer vital water, sanitation, hygiene and medical support to vulnerable communities to stop the spread of the disease. Integration of traditional medicine and science for global health highlighted the WHO Summit. The World Health Organization launched the first Global Traditional Medicine Summit in Gandhinagar, India in recognition of the tremendous contributions traditional medicine has made to both human health and the environment, the summit strives to foster the exchange of research and best practices in this field. For the benefit of people and the environment, WHO underlined the importance of fusing conventional wisdom with cutting-edge research. 
The summit promotes the safe and efficient use of traditional medicine while working to incorporate it into healthcare systems through scientific validation and innovation. The Gujarat Declaration intends to make it easier for traditional medicine to be properly included into state-level healthcare systems. At least 500 children die of hunger in Sudan because of the war. Nearly 500 children have died from anger in Sudan and it's possible that even more have died. Surprisingly, this includes 24 babies who live in a home run by the state. About 20 international humanitarian organizations have issued a joint warning, indicating that roughly 6 million Sudanese citizens are hovering on the verge of famine. The fight between the army and a militia group that started in April has caused a lot of trouble. Reports say that at least 5,000 people have died and that more than 4 million people have been forced to leave their homes. India slotted low on women empowerment and gender parity. India has ranked poorly in women's empowerment and gender parity, according to recent data. The country's position is concerning with disparities in economic participation, education, health and political representation between men and women. These findings highlight the need for significant efforts to bridge these gaps and promote gender equality. The report underscores the urgency of addressing social norms, policies and initiatives to empower women and create a more balanced society. India must prioritize comprehensive measures to uplift women and ensure their active participation across all sectors, fostering a more inclusive and progressive nation. Wastewater holds potential to provide alternative energy. A new study by the United Nations Environmental Programme, UNEP, has revealed that while wastewater is considered a health and environmental threat, with the right policies, wastewater can be used to generate alternative energy. It has potential to provide energy to nearly half a billion people, supply over 10 times the water provided by current global desalination capacity, and offset over 10% of global defertilizer use. UNEP urges governments and businesses to consider wastewater as a circular economy opportunity, instead of a problem to be disposed of. Thank you for watching, I'm Sofia and this was all for today, stay tuned for our next episode!